We're following some new developments on Capitol Hill where Senate Democrats passed a three and a half trillion dollar budget resolution overnight. The massive spending bill addresses many of President Biden's top legislative priorities like climate change, poverty, Medicare, family leave, immigration and education. Democrats officially laid the foundation to pass a sweeping measure without any Republican support when the Senate reconvenes next month. This comes just hours after senators passed a bipartisan trillion dollar infrastructure bill that would tackle our nation's crippling roads, bridges and tunnels. Chris Van Cleve is following the latest on the Hill. The yeas are 50. The nays are 49, and the concurrent resolution as amended is agreed to. This morning, the Senate approved a $3.5 trillion budget resolution, setting the framework for a massive budget bill loaded with progressive social programs, including child and senior care, and money to combat climate change. The 50 to 49 party line vote came after an overnight votorama on a lengthy series of non-binding amendments. This amendment is just plain anti-pickup truck. Let's start there. Opposing my amendment is a vote in support of defunding the police. Some senators expressed exasperation at the procedure. So let all of us, 100 people, not walk but sashay down there and vote for this amendment. But earlier Tuesday, bipartisanship briefly reigned as the Senate overwhelmingly passed a $1.2 trillion infrastructure bill. On this vote, the yeas are 69. 19 GOP senators joined Democrats in voting to rebuild the nation's highways, bridges, public transit, and expand access to broadband. After years and years of infrastructure week, we're on the cusp of an infrastructure decade that I truly believe will transform America. Tennessee's Bill Haggerty voted no. They call the infrastructure bipartisan, but... I think what it reveals is the strategy deployed by the majority leader. He wanted to put the patina of bipartisanship on this initial package. He wanted to create a series of, of, of actions, real momentum, toward this $3.5 trillion spending spree that's going to be a debt bomb for America. The infrastructure measure heads to the House, but Speaker Nancy Pelosi won't allow a vote until the Senate passes that $3.5 trillion budget bill. The total vision is about not only building physical infrastructure, but building human infrastructure. So for more on this, let's bring in Chris Van Cleve. He is joining us live from Capitol Hill. So, Chris, I actually want to go back to your little sort of show and tell that you did on CBS NAM because I thought it was a great explainer for people. Vlad and I have talked a lot about these two, what we've been calling infrastructure bills. One is an infrastructure bill. One is a budget bill that includes elements that would fund the human infrastructure. But we actually don't know specifically how that money would be spent. So can you just kind of go over that again? The difference between the two bills and where do they go from here? Sure. Let's look at this phone as the infrastructure bill. All right, so that's past the Senate. We're going to put it over here on the shelf because it's going to be uh, in a holding pattern uh, for months while this budget bill is being worked out. All right, the House won't take up that infrastructure bill, the phone I just set on the shelf. Uh, until this other budget deal, this $3.5 trillion thing, is done. What has happened uh, overnight here is that the Senate approved the framework, basically a list of instructions to all of the committees that will be involved in drafting the budget bill as to what sorts of things need to be in the legislation, and it put a ceiling on how much each of those committees can spend. Another way to think about it, they basically voted to put the train on the tracks, and now they've got to figure out what to fill the train up with. The train can't leave the station until it has its cargo, and right now that cargo hasn't been made, ordered, or delivered. So what kind of momentum, Chris, does the president have right now when it comes to key legislation? Uh, does the Congress or the White House believe there will be more future opportunities for bipartisan breakthroughs? Momentum on Capitol Hill is short-lived. <laughs> In this case, uh, bipartisanship <laughs> lasted about 30 minutes uh, before they went into a straight party line vote. Uh, the Obama administration has to expect from here on in that they are going to face a lot of opposition to the rest of their agenda from Republicans. There's very little uh, in what the president wants to do, certainly in this budget act, that Republicans will support, that any Republicans will support. Uh, you know, obviously there will be measures or, or, or issues that pop up over the next three plus years where there is uh, Republican buy-in, but as far as this budget bill, uh, that's not going to be one of them. 
So momentum as far as bipartisanship for the moment, kind of done. You're not going to see support on voting rights. You're not going to see support on this budget act. Uh, and the debt ceiling is going to be a huge partisan fight. So uh, they had their bipartisan moment, and now we've moved back to partisan Washington. I like how we're sort of maintaining the transportation imagery through this momentum. The train is on the track. So back to that train that is empty of cargo. Uh, there are issues with it, though. Um, it's many, a number of lawmakers think it is too expensive or perhaps the train is too long. Senator Joe Manchin uh, pushed back against the massive budget resolution. Um, and also, you know, there are going to be debates about what goes in the train, right? And from both sides, Democrats and Republicans are going to want to argue about how that money should be spent. How will the White House and Democrats try to unite the party in order to pass the bill without any GOP support? Well, I think the White House and Democrats are going to pretty much ignore the noise that Republicans are making. Republicans, however, are going to pressure Joe Manchin, uh, Kirsten Sinema, uh, and a couple of other moderate Democrats uh, into you know, trying to get them to push for a smaller bill. Uh, Cinema and Manchin have already said that they're uncomfortable with $3.5 trillion. They think it's too much. Uh, Cinema said that a few weeks ago. Manchin said it uh, shortly after the Senate went into recess, probably before most of his colleagues had made it to the tarmac to fly home. Uh, some of this is political posturing. Recess uh, is a time when uh, you know, there's a bit of a, a, a news vacuum up here, so it's an opportunity for Senator Manchin here to drive the conversation for a couple of weeks. Uh, but look, it is a 50-50 split in the Senate. Democrats cannot lose a single vote, and they have at least two votes right now that uh, could be no votes. So obviously there's going to be changes to uh, what, whatever goes into this bill. There's going to be a negotiation. It's going to be a process. Uh, it will probably take longer than people would like. And, uh, you know, we'll see where it ends up. But it's not a guarantee. And because the budget bill is not a guarantee, it's not a guarantee that the infrastructure bill that passed the Senate bipart in bipartisan fashion will get a vote in the House. Because remember, that's sitting on a shelf and it doesn't come out of time out until this budget bill gets passed. Right. That was going to be my next question, Chris. What is what's going on with Nancy Pelosi moving forward? Uh, well, she's going to call the House back uh, on the 23rd uh, and, and they will take up the House version of this budget resolution. Basically, the House agreeing that the train should be on the tracks. Uh, and then uh, they'll likely do something on one of the voting rights bills, the John Lewis Voting Rights Act. Uh, un unclear what future that maybe holds in the Senate, but uh, the House will do that. Uh, notable in the message to members yesterday saying you've got to come back to work during recess, uh, there was no mention of the infrastructure bill. And uh, the Speaker has been very clear that uh, if you want to pass the bipartisan infrastructure bill in the House, you're going to have to pass this reconciliation $3.5 trillion budget bill. Uh, she's got a very, very narrow majority. It's a little bit better than the Senate, but not a lot. She can only lose about three votes. Progressives, um, and there are about 95 or so progressives in, in the Progressive Caucus, uh, the majority of them say they won't vote for infrastructure if they don't get this bill. Uh, then you have moderates in, in, in the House that don't like the size of the budget bill. So uh, there are divides inside the, the Democratic Party in the House, and there isn't really a margin to spare there either. So this is threading a needle not once but twice. So, Chris, um, before we let you go, I want to ask you to look down the track now. And can we talk about the raising of the debt ceiling and how that may factor in when it comes to funding this human infrastructure? That should these two bills sort of move forward, then the bigger one, it, lawmakers are going to have to debate about programs, you know, how to divide this money up in terms of how it should be used. And um, the debt ceiling will factor in. So at the risk of taking this analogy one step too far, if the budget bill is the train <laughs> on the tracks, the debt ceiling could be the bridges out around the curve. Um, it, look, the Democrats could roll the debt ceiling increase into this budget bill, and they could do it, uh, they think, uh, on, a, on a partisan, pure, simple majority vote. Republicans are telling them that is the way to do it, that there will be no Republican support. You know, Mitch McConnell's not... Uh, my experience is not big on bluffing, so if he says that there's not going to be Republican support, at least you need to run on the assumption that for the time being there's not going to be Republican support. The debt ceiling, it seems it, it, it's very hard to fathom a situation where 
the Senate at the end of the day allows the U.S. to default on its debt. So the debt ceiling is going to have to get raised. Uh, how that happens, we'll find out. It will certainly start to consume an awful lot of oxygen up here, particularly in the Senate come September. And that will, uh, that, that does not make it any easier to get this budget bill done. Um, you know, I think the reason for not putting it in reconciliation into that, into that budget bill right now is that moderates that are already concerned about the cost, uh, that's one more thing that they have to vote on in a package, and that might be a tipping point for another senator or two. You have uh, a handful of moderate senators on the Democratic side that are facing re-election uh, in the next 18 months, and uh, you know there, there are some concerns they have about what, uh, uh, you know, what sort of incoming they'll take by voting on some of these things. All right, Chris Van Cleve on the Hill for us. As always, my friend, we appreciate it. Thank you. Sure thing.